This thing on? Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mark Jackson from Source ADV. I've got a box here today that I'm really excited to open. Uh, it's from a little company called Moscow Moto. Ooh. You know, I start actually, in, in full disclosure, I started opening this box already, and then I wanted to potentially share the moment of unboxing the Reckless 40 together before I install it. So yeah, let's get into it and see what comes in this box. All right. <laughs> like I said, I already started opening this, so if you uh, comment and don't think that it's a traditional unboxing because the tape is already cut, you're weird. Uh, so yeah, let's see what happens. Oh yeah, so we got some of this uh, Oh, okay. All right, so first things first here, looks like the harness. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, okay, we got Reckless 40 right there, as you can see. Got the straps. There's the old goggle pocket. So some people actually complained that the goggle pocket was a little bit too small. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Oakley air brakes and see what that's actually like. Probably gonna have to fast forward through this section so you can't see all my crap. Uh, let's see here. Okay, here we go. All right, Oakley air brakes. These are the goggles that I tend to ride on off-road, enduro stuff, but uh, they're pretty darn big. So yeah, already it's looking, let me get this over to the light actually. It's looking like the goggle pocket issue it is real. It's definitely a little bit small for something like an air brake. Let's see here. Maybe it goes the backwards. Let's see. Impressions, can you still see me? Oh yeah, that's good. All right, so let's try getting that in there. All right. Yeah, so goggle pocket, living up to the reputation of being a little bit too small for full-size moto goggles. Easily, right? There we go. Okay, so I mean, they fit. They definitely fit. It's definitely just a tight fit. Um, I definitely would want to put them in there with their microfiber bag because they are quite stuffed. And I gotta think over time that that's gonna get some dirt in there and that sort of thing. But anyway, sorry, I digress. Went straight to the goggles. That's not a coarse light. All right, so let's just throw this thing on the bike, huh? Oh yeah, okay, all right. Wow, okay, I got it. Oh man, the initial reaction here, guys, is that this thing is just, wow, the material is so durable. Wow, it's just, I mean, you can tell that like literally, sorry, the bike's a little dirty today as it should be. This anti-abrasive material, this is like that, where they put in that panel that can wear really well is incredibly strong. Oh, wow, okay. Check this out. So if you need to replace that strap, it's just a traditional standard Molly panel kind of style brace. And I'm guessing you can just kind of pull that out. I'm not gonna mess with it too much and then replace this strap if you need to. That's super easy. That's great. The, thus far, I will say that Everything is definitely, sorry, I'm burping because of beer. That's awesome. The durability level is definitely, you know, living up to the reputation, if not way more than what I expected. This is pretty phenomenal, honestly. I mean, this stuff is just, it's a, gonna be a lot of riding to wear through any of this. Wow. So we got the different little fuel bottle bags. Let's see, I got a fuel bottle up here somewhere. <clears throat> there we go. MSR one liter fuel bottle. Let's check that out. Oh yeah. There we go. Oh man, nice, nice snug fit. 
Okay, so that part's connected. Okay, so there's a strap that goes around the fuel bottle right here, fuel bottle bag. Tilt this down a little bit more. So there's a strap that goes around the fuel bottle bag right here, see that? So initially I just tried to slide the, bag, the fuel bottle in and it was kind of tight. And then I re realized there's a strap that goes around that and it actually goes all the way around the entire pouch that slides in that one, the dry bag for the side. So that's really cool. So the fuel bottle goes in nice and snug. Wow, I mean, I'll be honest, it's kind of cold out here and this stuff is definitely pretty rigid, but I'd rather it be rigid and too durable and need to be broken in a little bit than, than you know, not durable enough, right? Oh wow, that's pretty cool, okay. Little roll type buckled enclosure. Obviously, if this were actually the day of the ride, I'd probably, if I was only running with one fuel bottle, I probably wouldn't put that fuel bottle on the exhaust pipe side. But, uh, you know, for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna do it and we'll live dangerously. So we got a nice little pocket here on the inside. You could definitely put some cool, easily accessible stuff right there. Things you wanna grab. Um, I could see putting a multi-tool there or, you know, whatever else. Definitely not something that needs to be water or wind or weather resistant. That is totally exposed to the elements. Here's the, the beaver tail fold like that. Other side, man, just is incredibly durable. Look at the Molly, Molly accessory panel. That's pretty cool. I'm already fantasizing about buying a 10 liter pouch to go on that. That'd be fun. Add a little bit more storage. Um, I opted to go for the Stinger 22 on top of the Reckless 40. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what it actually all looks like once it's on the bike and start stuffing some gear in it. I'll probably throw a few, few sleeping bags in there just to kind of see what the volume's like. But overall, the harness is just super durable. Man, the stitching is fantastic. The, you know, this pad where they know there's gonna be a lot of wear and tear seems super strong. It'll be interesting to see, you know, if you're super picky about the looks, the looks of your bike and scratches and that sort of thing, I will say this probably will, you know, put a pretty good amount of scratches and abrasion on the side of the bike. But uh, I think that's just the cost of doing business in this, in this world of adventure riding, right? Get used to it. Very cool. Very impressed overall. Let's keep digging into this box. See what else we got. Oh yeah, just a note too, here's those places where you can, this is the strap obviously that goes down to the frame and locks it in. That's another compression strap. Um, and this is the hole that they talk about where you can pull the bag in from the bottom. Pretty cool. What else we got in here? What's the next thing? All right, oh, oh yeah, okay. Oh, right into it. So this is, the Stinger. I'm gonna get you guys in the light here. The Stinger 22 bag. Cool. Okay, yeah, cool. Once again, initial reaction is super impressed with the build quality. Wow. Look at the welded seams. Just super nice. There's not a single frayed stitch anywhere. Everything's looking really good. Oh, interesting. So there's Velcro in the top there that holds that together. That's pretty cool. Just double check the view here again. Nice bright blue in there. Wow, it makes things really visible. You can see just how well that reflects the light. It really brightens up the inside of the bag compared to that, right? Got gray and then oh, bright blue. Very nice. Um, yep, here's the, I guess in here are the Backpack straps, let's see. Oh, yep, okay, cool, nice. Oh, that's a great way to do it. Cool, okay, oh yeah. So then the backpack strap just clips on that loop right there, that loop right there, and boom, you got a backpack. Yep, okay, crazy, cool. Yeah, like I said, Build quality is 
well above what I expected, honestly, you know. Um, I feel like this thing could, I feel like you could just, you know, put 100 pounds on this thing, it would take it. Um, but yeah, so let's take a look. So let's do this, do a little roll top test here. There we go. Oh yeah, there we go, we got a Stinger 22. Let's check it out and put it on the ground here now that it's closed. And... Oh, looks like I didn't get a good enough roll on that, but even with that, it's still holding most of the air. That's pretty impressive. That pouch on the outside for something easily accessible that you need to see is pretty cool. KTM, ready to race. All right, very cool, let's put that here. Oh, that looks really big. Um, that I can see how it's stuffed in, but that's pretty crazy. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how it all packs out, you know, if you actually need the 22 or not, or if the 22 just kind of becomes something that I have on the side for longer trips. Let's keep going here. All right, what we got here? Oh, okay, that's the Stinger 8. Oh, wow, this thing, this thing almost feels more durable than a Stinger 22, that's crazy. I mean, I know it's the same material, but it's just feels super solid. Let's take a look in here, oh, same nice bright blue interior, that's awesome, very cool. Okay, there's the Velcro, the Velcro that holds it on to the back, what's that? Ooh, little presents. Oh, that must be the straps. That, okay, so those are the straps. So look in here. So you can go in the back here and there's straps that you can use that are built right in to cinch it onto any, any kind of tail frame like that, right? Any kind of rack you have on the back of the bike, the straps are actually built in to the bottom of the Stinger 8. So it can be a standalone tail bag. That is, I actually did not know that it was built in that way and that is, Really freaking cool. So install is done. Uh, it took me about, I would say 25 to 35 minutes. Uh, the hardest part was probably figuring out exactly where to put those cleats. Looks pretty good, I think. Uh, got that exhaust shield on. You gotta trim that extension, that end of the uh, hose clamp off. So it's best to spin it down to the bottom and then trim it off with a cutoff wheel and then you can spin it back up and then you get the nice shiny part of the hose clamp versus the serrated part. But overall, I've got two towels there, fuel bottle there, uh, not a beer pocket. Uh, Stinger 8's got a full towel in it as well. Everything's all tidied up, looking good. Uh, this side has a full warm weather motorcycle jacket in it, and right down there has a JBL speaker. Uh, so overall, yeah, looking pretty good. And then you can see the cleat over here. Moscow's probably gonna tell me I did it wrong. But I mean, I don't know, it seems seems totally totally fair. With these silly things on here, I kinda have to go this way. But it looks pretty good. One of the things I will note is just make sure you have enough room for the washer to mount flat on the undertail. There is a ridge for support on the undertail that also has some wires going through it. So choose your hole wisely. And uh yeah, everything seems solid. I'm going to give it a ride with the Stinger 8 and then try the Stinger 22. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for some more build stuff. Uh, IMS 4.5 gallon tank going on next. And then the Nomad ADV Tower. And then I'll do a full review of that whole phase, which I'm calling Phase 2. So thank you for tuning in to Source ADV. This is the KTM 500 EXE Ultra Lightweight ADV Bike. I'm Mark Jackson. Have a good day. Oh, there were some fun stickers in the box too.
Moscow. Moscow. How about like that? Yeah, so I'm gonna add them to the old sticker pile, bring them down to Baja for the kids to the next race. All right, that's it. Bye.